exciting episode of Paracella Geek. I'm Miguel Guerra. And I'm Susie Diaz. And we're here to ink you up. That's right. Today is the first of four parts of a digital inking series. Very good. And you'll be highlighting Manga Studio. That's which right. Is now called Clip, uh, Clip Studio Paint. That's right. From Smith Clip Micro. Paint Studio. <laughs> we'll have a link in the description box yeah. below. Uh, and uh, it's the entire process of Miguel inking a page from our short story, Nostradamus, A Prophet's Curse, which will be available next year in a new anthology. We'll have a sh a l all of short stories that yeah. we've published yeah. through the years put, up until now. Put together in, a, in a, an anthology called Tales of the Absurd. That's right. Thank you. And it will include things we've published in Heavy Metal Magazine with Guan from uh, Forward Comics and in our own free anthology, Earth Dream. Mm -hmm. Again, all the links to everything will be in the description box. So we hope you enjoy part one of this four-part series. And more importantly, it's time to get your geek on! In terms of uh, what I was doing at the beginning, you probably saw me extend some lines. The beauty of computer programs and digital is that you can add layers. Just be aware, I added some, a layer so I could extend the panels. So I did that because of format issues, which we'll talk about later. Now, in terms of the tools that I use, my favorite inking pen is the mapping pen. Why do I like it? Because it goes, I set it from thick to thin, and you can get a nice, beautiful, thin to thick line. It sort which, of mimics a brush nicely. Yes, it does. The other tool that I, I really favor, and there are many tools in this program that I do, but I usually stick to three. The other one's the line tool, and you're seeing me use it right now. Uh, pretty much you start at one point, Dra uh, drag that, stretch that point into a line to the end point, click well, it, uh, yeah, and you, then you, bend it. And you it's click where beautiful. the line begins, mm -hmm. you click where the line will end, mm -hmm. then you can bend the line. Yes, okay. that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, so those are the, those are the tools. Uh, other tools you won't be seeing me use too much, uh, actually you won't be seeing me using this one, uh, is a perspective tool, and I think that's one of the strongest points uh, in Manga Studio is the perspective tool because as much as I love and I know my perspective, it can get taxing when you want to get it dead right. Exactly. And there's no going back if you screw it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is. It's just called doing it over again. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fun. So, yeah, those are the tools. So in terms of this, what I'm inking, this panel. Yes, th what is this that you're inking? What this, is this lovely page? This page is from a story. A short for the, story. A short story coming up for, yeah, uh, for uh, Tales of the Absurd. It's a collection of short stories I've had in heavy metal and other places and other places, and some original new ones. So if you've managed to see some of my stuff from heavy metal or in other places, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, some of your stuff, some of our stuff, some new stuff. A lot of new stuff, a so lot of stuff. Some different short stories that um, will compile. I'd like to say I have a vault. It's kind of like a little... <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> no, nah, it's kind of like a little box uh, with stories and stuff. That's pretty much it. And I'm letting out that box. Shoe box of horrors. Shoe box, yeah. It's a shoe box. It's definitely no uh, Prince Vault, it's for sure. <laughs> uh, so, so this story is called Nostradamus, mm -hmm. A Prophet's Curse. That's right. Ooh. And not profit as in making money, but and yeah, profit yeah. as in, uh, you know... To foretell. Thank you. Yes. The idea came about for, from a lot of Nostradamus stories I had heard, ghost stories I heard when I was younger, I read about, and I combined a whole bunch of them together to make this story. Yeah. And uh, I'll talk more about that in other upcoming videos. If only Vincent Price were still alive to narrate. Yes. If awesome. it's, yeah. It's not quite the Actually, same. Actually, there's not really narration, is there? No. No, no. I, uh, no. There's no, no narration. Right. But he could do the voice. Yeah, he could do the voices, absolutely. Okay, so this process here. This process here. So right now I'm using my mapping pen, and I use that predominantly. Oh, yeah, the other tool I use is a paint bucket. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, that's the You'll other tool. You'll show that in, a little, in just a little while. Yeah, but as you watch me right now, you can see that I have the uh, um, pen clicked on. You can see my mapping pen I've chosen. And I'm just taking my time. Just uh, inking away, and I'm blocking out the, the, the black ink. I'm lightening up the actual oh, that's uh, nice feature, huh? pencils. Yeah, that's something. So you can lighten your pencils so you can, or darken them, just so it's easier for you to ink over them. Yeah, so I can kind of see what I kind of. Kind of fade in, in Photoshop language, right? Oh, well, yeah. 
Yeah. And it's just something or that opacity, I, I should say. Yeah, opacity. that's that's probably better. Yeah. And you'll see that I'll draw a line. Don't like it. Step back, right? And that's what I did just th uh, there. The other thing is too, as I use the uh, inking as an editing tool, I don't use it as a means of exactly copying what I've drawn. If not, if I was going to do that, I just scan my pencils in and I just go to town with what I've got. But the intention with inking, for me at least, is to improve the uh, improve the drawing even more than I did before. You know, sometimes there might be an eye that's a little too low, a little too high. Or something like that, and I'm I'm very very picky about that stuff. So yeah, good. So when when you don't uh, light box, correct? No, I don't light I don't light box. I, so you do your pencils, you scan them in, and then you digitally ink them. That's right. Even some of the stuff that I do tend to draw that you might see kicking around that's pencils that looks like it's been uh, light boxed uh, hasn't. But you have a pretty clean line. Yeah, and I have my little tricks with the pencil uh, with the eraser to erase my construction lines. Uh -huh. But that might be a different one. We'll that's... stick to the inking at the moment. Yeah. And also because you ink your own drawings, mm -hmm. you know, you're the boss. You're at liberty. I'm at liberty to make sure that I get my stuff looking the best exactly. as possible. Yeah. It, it, it's it's sort of taxing, but it looks – you can tell when – to me, you can tell someone who's done done both. There's certain quirks and certain things that you know that you want to improve upon. And there's things that actually as I'm doing the inking process that help, helps me later on with my pencils. I realize I shouldn't be doing this. This doesn't look good. Of course, I hope that I remember the next time I get to the yeah, Institute. Yeah, that's a good that. thing too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I try to make a mental note of it. Yeah, and you see here the, the eyes. Sometimes for the eyes, I might, depending how big the person's face is, it isn't that big here. Uh, sometimes I might use the circle tool, circle line drawing tool, to make the eyes perfectly round. I'm sort of conflicted. I, don't, I think it looks too unnatural sometimes. Yeah, if it's too perfect. If it's too perfect. But sometimes when it's really, really a big face, our eye, yeah, I tend to not want to do it by hand. We, we, you know, people are symmetrical, more or less. More or less. And your eye sort of will see errors, especially if it's a drawing. Yeah. And sometimes them seeing errors, if you will, or a, a natural drawn line is better, and other times it's not. Mm -hmm. It depends on how your eye looks at it. Your eye will look at it like it seems good, familiar, or, ooh, there's a mistake there. Mm -hmm. So it kind of depends on the drawing and how people view it. Right. Sometimes if it's too perfect, it looks mechanical. Yeah. yeah. And if it looks mechanical, it doesn't look... It, there's a certain part of the humanity that's lost from it. Now, one of the other things to keep in mind, too, is that you can still see that I'm still actually sitting here with my pen and my stylus, and I'm inking it. There are some advantages to using digital ink as opposed to using um, regular analog brushes and pens and stuff. However, the computer doesn't do it for me. I still have to sit there all these hours basically reworking. Uh, yeah, th this is sped up too <laughs> this video is very long <laughs> yes. it was three hours long or something yeah. so I, I sped it up for the tutorial yeah and it wasn't just three hours for the actual just panel it was three hours for the entire page oh yes yes this video will show the whole page start to finish mm -hmm. so yeah you're seeing here as i'm blocking it out you can see how I extended the, the blue lines. That's on a separate panel, a uh, separate layer, of course. Yeah, your, your paper ended. You can see where the paper ended. There's the <laughs> top of the paper. The rings. Exactly. So the rings. what? You, the, another advantage is because it's digital, you can increase the size of your canvas. Right. Right, depending on what your final printed page is or your ebook, whatever the final form is. You can add, as he did, he extended the line mm -hmm. where he thought it would be needed, depending on the size. So that's a nice feature, too. You're not just limited to the page. You can give yourself, if you need a little bit more room to cut the paper, mm -hmm. or if you need a little bit room for a border, anything at all. Mm -hmm. Makes it easy. And Thanks. now this tool here... As you mentioned before. The paint bucket. Now, look. I that's just, a good example of a paint bucket. Yes, that's a good example. <laughs> of, uh, sure, there's there's drying times with uh, regular stuff, but I can guarantee unless you spill your entire yeah, bottle on, on your paper, that's not going to happen. It's modern art. You can put it in a museum. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, just draw a line on something and you're good to go. So the problem was is that I didn't attach all the lines, and I'm trying to figure out where the lines are attached so I can paint bucket and make sure that it stays in his hair. Yeah, so just like in Photoshop, you have to make sure all the lines are touching. Mm -hmm. So it's a self-contained shape. That's right. I mean, I could increase the paint bucket 
to only capture a certain amount of pixels. My issue with that is, is that if you do that, then you might have to go in and just clean up the line butting up to it. So if you keep your paint bucket nice and low in terms of how many pixels it accepts and does the gap, then you're good. Or else it can kind of do some funny things and that just adds more time. Yeah, when it comes to this stuff too, the way you use the tools now will be different a year from now, will be different five years from now. You know, people just get comfortable and you need to do it uh, some people know all the shortcuts and some people don't, but whatever way is comfortable and whatever way gives you a nice final piece. Yeah, it's all about the final piece. Yeah, exactly. In the end. For example, when I decided to use really heavy black, and those of you who know my work, I tend to not use heavy black. I tend to favor more an open style with more color. I mean, I have done some pieces where it's heavy black. This is the first story I think that I've done really, really heavy black. And part of it is, is that I have this philosophy that I believe that a story, a style dictates the the mood of the story. So if you have very open... Or uh, maybe the other way. The story and the mood dictate the art style. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, what that's I mean. The that's, that's why you're, you're my co-writer. <laughs> yeah, never mind what I just said. Listen <laughs> no. to her. So, yes, uh, absolutely. I think that's one thing that I think has served me well. It served me well to experiment and try different things and break out of just having that one style that I might favor over another. But I really feel that each story that I've come up with or, and that I'm developing uh, right now with Susie has to have its own sort of spirit and its own sort of style.